whoops hello everybody i'll just get this yes hello everybody and welcome to the talk how to increase love and connection and i have one of my main speakers tonight i have the most amazing jane evans jane is a parenting expert trauma expert and also is the author of the little meerkat panic did i get that right nearly little meerkat's big panic little meerkat's big panic absolutely <laughs> <laughs> now jane so love and connection is really at the the heart of your work because um talk to us about the why love and connection is so important Yes, it's um, it's very interesting. In fact, my son uh, messaged me this morning to say, "Look out, Mum! Uh, Super Nanny's back on television." <laughs> um, so yeah, luckily not on mainstream, but pretty mainstream. And um, you know, it 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 just shines a light on how so many parenting practices. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily put Super Nanny in this camp, but but you know, most of mainstream parenting is is full of good intentions. And because because parents love their children and want to establish this incredible relationship with them, they often are in that space of so that means I have to be really clear with them about right and wrong and you know be very firm about certain things because you know I, I you know that that's just what's been handed down to me and it kind of makes sense but actually you know in my gargantuan journey of looking at how we raise children so it started 29 years ago when I had a child had one. <laughs> yes and it's ongoing because I'm going to be a, a grandma in December oh congratulations um, thank you <laughs> um yes uh, so it, it kind of um, that got me in this space of curiosity because my son showed me again and again and I kept missing the point of the story was this more traditional approach actually disconnects us mum and then it gets in the way of that free flow of love <clears throat> so for example you know if I used rewards if I used, okay, so now I'm going to take that away from you. There was the famous sticker chart where he got a Spider-Man compact where he's never forgiven me for the humiliation, but he was glad for the Spider-Man compact. Um, yeah, he kept showing me in multiple ways, this doesn't keep us connected. So that kind of really pulled me down this road of curiosity about, so what is it that is disconnecting? And then, you know, you slowly you have these aha moments and you realize it's conditions. When we put conditions in, conditions are barriers to love and connection. And, you know, once I finally right. wrapped my head around that because he kept showing me and I kept feeling it in myself. Um, but then wondering and worrying and questioning myself. But when I really tuned into my to my nervous system, I could always feel it was so wrong when he and I disconnected at this emotional, but also like body based visceral level as well. Right. So talk to us about that in that nervous system and why it's so important to connect because it's like a wireless system, isn't it? The nervous system. So how does that work? I'm not I don't get the whole scientist. It's scientific aspect. So I'd like to know more. Yeah, sure. And, and you know, as you know, I, I tend to take things and put them into very simple ways for us all to just access and remember. So if you think of your nervous system, this is an internal body system. So much in the same way that we don't think about the plumbing in our house. We're just mm. really glad that it works. Mm. And we only really notice it if it's not working very well. It's the same with our nervous system. It, it particularly is called the autonomic nervous system. So it runs in the background. It just keeps our heart beating. All the things that you do with relaxed kids keeps your breathing regulated, digests your food, makes you poo and wee. And but you know you don't think about this stuff. It just runs seamlessly mm. in the background unless we are too stressed 
Mm. And then we start to notice it. So, you know, if every time you turned on your tap, you only got boiling hot water, you would notice that. Mm. Likewise, if every time you turned on your tap, you only got freezing cold water, you would also notice this. And that's mm. what happens with our nervous system is that it's trying to give you that lovely mixer tap of the right amount of cool, which is the low energy breathing down into our bellies and the mm. right amount of hot, which is the is the high energy in our middle of our body so that we have got energy that, you know, we, we're mm. interested in life. And when you get the right balance in the nervous system, then you're in this lovely, like we are now, this lovely connecting flow. There's a great energy exchange between you. Um, you know, if, if say one of us was to get in a bit of a fluster or a panic now, what one of us would subconsciously go in and rescue the other person because we've already mm. connected. I can feel it through my body. So mm. with parents, this is the most, it's like the biggest, one of the biggest untold secrets that your fabulous nervous system is what when your child gets connection with it and your nervous system is in this balanced state right amount of cool energy right amount of hot energy then you get this lovely exchange and your child receives you as feeling not intellectually but in the body and subconsciously safe and calm and regulating so mm. I always say to parents, you know, you honestly are the most precious resource for your child always and forever. Yeah. Um, wow. But we just don't always realise it. And it's not a cognitive process, is it? Like in, in terms of love and connection, you know, saying, saying, yes, I love you. That, so just talk about how it's not a cognitive, how children need so much more than just being told yeah, that. Just being told, yes. Um, so, you know, sometimes I work with parents and they at the beginning of our work together, they will say, you know, well, I, I do lose it with my child. And, um, you know, sometimes we, we have really big rows and but, you know, they know I love them or at bedtime, I tell them I love them. And, um, you know, it's a it's that mismatch of what's radiating out of your body in terms of resentment and frustration. And, and, you know, we are allowed to feel our feelings, but then we need to just pay attention to them and bring ourselves back because no child deserves to feel your resentment, feel your, you know, rejection of them um, for for longer than is humanly possible our, our task is always really to notice whoa I do have these big feelings and find to say to your child you know what I am whew, I'm, I'm sorry I just oh I need I need to take a breath yeah so it's for parents to learn it, it, it their own self-regulation is so yeah. important it's not about the children it, it, it drives me no, insane it, yeah because we're all about yeah getting your children there are so many parents that we've had yet yeah, my child is so stressed my child is really <laughs> anxious what can you do and i'm thinking yeah, I don't, I'm <laughs> this voice i know i know I'm, you know it, it's not helpful for professionals to be putting stuff out there saying teach your child to self-regulate there's a lot of products being sold to schools and preschools now about getting children to self-regulate well that's something that's not going to happen until they're you know they're in their 20s 30s and let's be wow honest, really yeah most adults who do you know that you could name off the end of your tongue who you would think, oh, they are really regulated. And whenever they get a bit activated, they always bring themselves back. Honestly, mm. not many people. Mm. I have met very few in my life. And I'm only new in the last probably year and a half to really being able to track my activation mm. and bring myself back to, okay, mm. I, I can feel that. <clears throat> so I'm going to ground myself. And to TV and radio have helped me a lot with that, being yelled at by various people. Yeah. 
makes you notice and ground yourself so that you can be that's really interesting because i do know a lot of meditators and i would put them in the category of yeah they know how to not all but not all, the, no. Not all. no no no, no. but there are there are some who um who 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 really have got it i just i do remember when i was at college in fact um a friend at college i would turn up to his house and he would be chanting <laughs> it was so funny he'd be oh. chanting so he'd be come out of his chanting in a lovely calm mm. state and then we'd drive to college and all his road rage came out it used to make me oh. smile so much. Yeah, yes. I mean, it, life is tough, isn't it? <laughs> it's tough, and and you know, I mean, honestly, I I try to reassure people all the time. I have made so many mistakes. Like, you know, I I don't I don't I know I come across very clearly and very categorical in a lot of what I say, but because I have made twenty nine years of errors, mm. um, and then just forensically studied neuroscience neurophysiology neurobiology polyvagal theory you know they're like my best friends in all of this because i don't say anything that i haven't read scientific research mm. and studies that back it up but i but the thing that makes me sad, saddest of all is well, why do why do we need that research to tell us that we need to be the ones that calm ourselves, ground ourselves, and move back into this place of love and compassion. Yes, one child has just punched another. Yes, this child has just smashed my favorite, whatever. And that's tough, and you're allowed to feel, oh, but then you need to breathe. You need to feel your feeling, know you're feeling that feeling, and then be bringing yourself back to but here's my child in front of me looking because we all know like even when we're little children you see a little child when they've done something they don't really understand what they've done but they generally go like that so they don't need us to pitch in wow look what you've done rah, rah, rah. they mm. need us to bring them back to the nervous system you know they need our safe nervous system to connect with to connect with the energy that radiates out of our bodies and our brains, electromagnetic energy, and bring them back to safety. And from a place of safety, and don't rush it, but eventually we do some exploring and learning. But in okay. that, still in that compassionate way, there's nothing we should be doing to children ever, ever, ever that requires us to be cross, mean, shaming, none of those things. They are not necessary. Wow. So you mentioned the polyvagal theory mm. and and I really love this whole concept of the vagus nerve and toning the vagus nerve in terms of hugging tone and cold cold water and singing and laughing a lot of the things that we haven't been able to do openly during mm. lockdown. Um so how can parents use that polyvagal theory in a very simple way to tone their own nerve, stimulate their own vagus nerve and what is the vagus nerve maybe explain yeah yeah that. yeah so I'm like you I'm crazy about the vagus nerve and if I wasn't um beyond the age of getting any more tattoos I think I honestly would get a, a big tattoo of the vagus nerve <laughs> right at my arm I, pr I love it so much so what is the vagus nerve well it's this ginormous nerve that runs from um, the base of our brain, our skull, um, all around our face, all around our throat, and all the way into all the major organs in our body. It is incredible. And nobody really knows that they have one. This is the tragedy. Now, it's incredible because it's the communication highway between your body and your brain. It's like the best gift you're going to ever get. Now, why is that? Well, because when you tap into your vagus nerve, it can send a message to your body, never mind your brain, your, 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 your cognitive brain, honestly, just forget about it. It's no use to man or beast or budgie or anyone else. But the vagus nerve can communicate to your body, we are safe. Mm. OK, and it can be something so simple. We, we know about breathing down into our bellies that will give your vagus nerve a workout. 
something as simple as humming. Mm -hmm. That's why some children, when they're stressed and adults, they hum all the time and then they get told mm -hmm. off for it or they whistle all the time and they also get told off for it. And rocking. Um, yeah, rocking. Um, anything that's a, that's a movement that's not too jiggly, a slow mm -hmm. intentional movement. Um, smiling actually one of the one of the best easiest ways because of all the connection mm. around the face is this so if you smile and you take a deep breath you've really toned your vagus nerve up and you've given this really powerful message to your body of we are safe we are safe we are safe and your body will start your nervous system will start to be like, oh, okay, and it will just it will just come to a place of calmness. Something as simple as just smiling to yourself and breathing down as far as you can get the air down your body. If you're not used to breathing into your belly, that will that will be a bit tricky to start with. Mm. Um, but yeah, and again, you know, something like just putting your hands on the top of your head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just again signals via mm. your vagus nerve. Or it's just okay. like a massage. Yeah. Oh, that's another one. Holding your face. Holding your face. That's mm. very, very regulating. Mm. But as I say to everybody, all of our bodies have a different history and a different story. So one size never fits all. So for me, doing that feels okay but if when I was being born or maybe as a punishment somebody had grabbed my face in a really horrible way yeah. um, and then even me doing that to myself would actually scare yeah. the whole system yes. and I'd actually go into yeah. fight flight same with hands on top of your head you know if you were pulled out by forceps or your head has been so we don't know the, the full story of our bodies, most of us. So I always say to people, go slowly. If you're going to put your hand on your heart, respect your your body. Because mm, mm. my vagus nerve, I can feel my hand. Oh, you can't see, but it's quite a long way from my body. But because I've done so much work on my vagus nerve and my nervous system, I'm highly attuned to movements wow. of energy and movements of energy are just movements of atoms it's not it's not like hippie yeah. guru stuff because as you know i'm very very science based <laughs> not there's anything wrong with the woo hippie stuff but you have to bring me the science and yeah. when i started studying it's not a lot of quantum physics because it's so hard i can't you know <laughs> it's a bit way beyond me um, but then i just write you know like everything is atoms and you start thinking of course it is everything mm. Which is why, you know, when you once you start really tuning into your body, I can feel that right down my vagus nerve, just moving my hand like that. That's mm. how tuned I am now to my mm. body system. So I can tell mm. when I'm in fight flight and I can, you know, ground myself. Yeah. It is really the vagus nerve is, is key to this. Jane, Stacey Mann has just asked, a lot of the parents she works with comment that they feel they've already damaged their children by not knowing these things. What can I do to reassure them that it's not too late? And I'm just going to charge my phone, so carry on. <laughs> Thank you, Stacey, and um, yeah, lo lovely to have a question from you. It is really important to reassure parents i mean i you know i've been working with parents for years and it's very it's very common part of the process of working with them that you know you're going to end up saying i feel so guilty now i know this and i've done all these terrible things and so i mean i always say to parents very, very kindly i say you're allowed to feel that it's okay it's okay allow yourself a moment to feel like that it, you know, it's rubbish. I mean, I know I've done all sorts of things to my son that, you know, I would, if I could go back in a heartbeat, of course, I wouldn't do any of that stuff now. And, and when I have my grandchild, you know, who I'm going to help um, care for when her mum finally goes back to work, quick, um, <laughs> you know, I will not be parenting her in the way that I was parenting my son. A lot of it I won't be doing. Of course, I won't. 
Um, so it's it's saying to them, it's totally fine. The only thing I often then say to parents is, but but you know, try not to sit in the guilt because mm. it's in the past. Mm. Now let's get excited about what can we do now because we know that the brain has capacity to rewire, um, especially the intellectual part of the brain, it's harder to rewire the survival and the emotional parts because they, they're they like that for a reason. Um, but for me, it's more about, okay, I've got this knowledge and I've had to go to some very uncomfortable places on this journey about my own parenting, um, particularly when you start studying childhood trauma. I've got this knowledge, now how do I move forward and improve things? Because it's never too late to create this really powerful connection with your child. And you know, as soon as you do it, they they respond. They respond. Yeah. So how how do we do it? How have you got three tips to or one tip even to for parents to build start building, start at even if they feel they're starting at the bottom, um, how do they build that connection? Yeah, it's, it's start with yourself. Start with yeah. yourself. Um, I stopped working with children years ago. I sometimes work with young young people still now. Um, but I, I realised that my main focus has to be the adults in the children's lives because, you know, particularly... If you if you have a role, a parenting role, so that could be anything. I was a foster carer for a while, you know, could be a kinship carer. Mm. Um, there, there's lots of ways we come to be the parent in a child's life. It could be, you know, the the, the auntie that has a lot of input or the uncle or that there's many ways. Um, so getting to know yourself more is the starting place. Because looking at the child and how do I fix the child and what have I done to the child? Well, you're just going to bring your anxiety about this into the very thing that you're <laughs> wishing to mm. improve. Whereas compassionately getting to know yourself a bit. So a really great starting point is to kind of have fun with yourself and go through the day and just have a day and actually if you get your children involved in this 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 will be even more fun um i mean those of you who know my meerkat elephant monkey brain model um will know like the meerkat brain is when we're whoo, a bit tense and a bit sharp and a bit you know woo. so just have a day with the children and say okay let's play spot the meerkat today so every time you see mummy or daddy or nanny or whoever be a bit meerkat um you know put a penny in the pot or something whatever you do have fun with it and then it will begin to show you ah these this is when my energy shifts this is when mm. I get stressed. you know you can't you can't know light until you've known dark absolutely you can't know the difference so you have to kind of in a really kind way I mean I still do it with myself I'll think whoa why was I so I have no idea why I've got in such a pickle about that you know yeah. but, but at least good. Yeah, if you don't notice it, how can you ever address it? So start mm. in, a, in a funny, fun-filled, compassionate way to play spot the meerkat. Amazing. So now, I mean, at this time with, with the whole COVID thing, mm. there is a, a societal disconnect, isn't there, where in, in a way, we, you know, all the things that we that are good for our vagus nerve we can't do, we can't sing, we can't in public, we can't um, hug, we can't see, because even just being in a social connection, laughing is good for the vagal nerve. And now mm. we have to be separate physically. So that that's creating almost like a societal trauma, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I'm I'm not massively you buying. Don't think, that. You don't think it's no. like creating like a disconnect in, in, in society where we're all just like feeling a little bit disconnected and a bit alone? Um it it can be, or you just find ways around it. You know, I mean I live by myself. Um, my son and my amazing daughter Nora and my amazing son, they live probably about 45, 50 minutes away. And I spend a hell of a lot of time on my own. But because I, I tend my vagus nerve a lot, 
<laughs> um, you know, I do something called Qigong every morning. I often do yoga as well throughout the day. I make sure that I <sighs> I connect with as many people as I can. Um, not not in a kind of I don't do quizzes and stuff like that. Although I'm I've heard they're very good. But you know, I just pay attention to making sure that I get connection with people. And I go for a walk every day. And on my walk, I mean, I've always done this, but even but people now respond really well. I smile at people and I say hello. Yeah. And some like, I had a chat with a couple of dog walkers just now. And you know, it's these little exchanges. I think if we get ourselves believing that, or you know, this is a catastrophe yeah. and we're all yeah. traumatized, and well, I just that's just not how I roll. I just you know see a caterpillar crawling across the ground when I'm out for my walk and I'm like how lucky am I that I get to see a caterpillar mm. and literally you know that's what I think you know whatever I it, it's just you can make this the worst of times in you or you can make it absolutely fine any moment can be fine even in the worst of times and I think mm. what we're modeling for the children right now is it's fine to feel miserable sometimes. It's fine to be really mm -hmm. sad that you couldn't, you know, whatever it was, have your birthday party and happy. It's totally fine. I honor your feelings. I'm not going to distract you out of them. I'm not going to, you know, and then when we're ready, we'll we'll move on and we'll do whatever we need to do. Mm. You know, but it's I don't I don't believe in catastrophizing things. Mm. Um, I think you can still tend to your vagus nerve. Um, you know, mm. sing at home. There's nothing wrong mm. with that. I know it's Absolutely. not a great. And some people, in fact, a lot of people are saying to me that they're realizing now how stressful they find it being around so many people. Wow, and actually, yes. they're quite enjoying not having to be in so much contact. And so, yeah, I think mm. it's just be curious and, mm -hmm. and just whichever way you're going tend tend to your regulation yeah your like regulation. you're in a garden you're in a garden it, it really yeah. is. I mean I, I yeah. you know I feel so so grateful to have come across all of this science and um to be able to use it you know on at the weekend somebody I, I mean I won't go into any details but somebody would too on, on a meeting was extremely rude to me, like off the scale. <laughs> um, and I just, in the end, I just thought, wow, this has given me a great opportunity to test all my resources out because I wow. was a bit yeah. discombobulated afterwards, but I thought, you know what? So practice what you preach, do some mm. breathing. Um, sometimes I lay on the ground because the ground is very grounding. The vagus nerve loves the ground unless it has a bad association with it. Um, I went for a walk. I practiced gratitude. I, you know, I literally pulled all my my tools out of my toolkit and came through what previously would have devastated me because it was another professional in front of professionals. And actually, yeah, by kind of late Saturday. I was just fine. I'm in, probably even before then sent them love and light. So um, any anything that potentially could be really yucky mm, mm. can be a learning opportunity. And and mm. the same when you're parenting. You know, when we get stuff wrong, it's it's just important to to focus actually on bringing ourselves back to calmness rather than plowing ahead with. Oh, I have to do that thing with the child now. And, mm. you know, it's like, mm. you know, as long as everyone's safe, focus on you. Just breathe, breathe, breathe. If they're not going to get harmed in any way, take as long as you need to to do that. You're modeling the best stuff to your children. Mm. Like, literally, that is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So, so yeah. what you're really saying is we have to... To, to have love and connection with our children, we need that love and connection with ourselves. And then we, 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 we can model that love and connection with our children. But I do want, oh, did you want to say anything? About yeah, that? No, I've got no, one more no, question. I, I talk a lot about self-acceptance because, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff around there about self-love and blah, blah, blah. And that, that can be a massive leap for most of us. I mean, you know, I'm, to be honest, I'm not that interested in whether I love myself, but I absolutely fundamentally accept myself, which mm. means 
I'm much more available to be loving and to connect. So that is like the, mm. the secret recipe for this. That's fantastic. And um, I know you're working on a project at the moment, Jane, with, a, yeah, tell us a bit about that project, trauma project. Yeah, it's an um, amazing opportunity that has that has come my way um, to work with a an, um, with a social enterprise called Innovating Minds. Some of you may have heard of them. You may have been to their incredible free webinars they've been doing the whole way through lockdown. They've been brilliant. Um, and I did one for them uh, for schools to uh, to address the impact of domestic abuse the trauma that that children you know are experiencing always with domestic abuse but we know during this time of lockdown that um, the prediction is which just makes sense that levels have really really risen um, and of course we will we won't really see the outcome of that until the children are properly back in school and then it will be two or three months afterwards trauma never just you know presents it, it takes a long time um, so yeah, I did a did a webinar for them on it, and there were 700 people attended. So um, Dr. Asha Patel, who's like the smartest cookie in the universe, <laughs> literally, she contacted me very quickly afterwards, and she said, "We need to put a program together. We, we've got a program we've been using, but I listening to you, I feel that it's not as trauma. It's not trauma informed. It's very cognitive." Mm. So um, she said to me, "Right." create something where we can train the people who really are in the lives of the children to run a small program for them like a six session program that's very much about what we've been talking about today it's it's more body based it's very very trauma sensitive you know when you train to be a practitioner for it you know why you're doing what you're doing you know how to hold this safe relational space for the children and um yeah it's, it i i'm sure there's nothing like it in the world so mm. um, yeah we've created beautiful videos for the children to explain breathing and the body brain connection and again they've all come through my very fierce trauma lens no that's not the right color no that can't be like that that's the wrong i mean i chose the voiceover artist you'll love this with my vagus nerve Oh, amazing. I love that. Yeah. Listen to all the voiceover artists and then my vagus nerve went that one. Yeah. Amazing. So that, you know, that's joyfully taking up a, a big, a big amount of my time. But you know what? I mean, I used to work so in you, so it's I've come full circle back to something mm. that's so dear to my heart for the children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, it's it's incredible what we're doing. I, I'm so amazing. proud of what we're doing. Asha's yeah. amazing to work with. Um, well she's done, got Jane. funding as well. She's trying to get lots of funding so that people can get free places or subsidized oh, places. Brilliant. She's working like Fantastic. crazy in the background. Oh, amazing. And the program is called again? It's called Healing Together. But you need Healing to go together. to the um, innovating. I'll put some of the links on a tweet on. Yeah, the, stick stick on. the links on, and then then people yeah. can. Yeah. 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 It's, um, Perfect. That's yeah. amazing. Thank you, Jane, for really teaching us how to get that connection with ourselves first, and then connecting to children, and then showing them how to connect to themselves. So, and all about the vague, I'm just all about the vague now. Thank you so, so much. That's been absolutely brilliant. Right, thank, thank you. Take care. Thanks, Jane. Take care. Bye.